Chapter 8. The story was Penny had seen his face on a waiting children list on the internet, and she'd known immediately that she had to adopt him. She'd been married to someone else at the time. Jaden had been one year old in the picture, but five in real life. Someone from his group home had lied and told the adoption agency that Jaden was still a baby. Then there was the divorce, and then Penny married Steve. So it had ended up taking three years to complete the adoption. That's why he had been eight when he came to the United States. And why Penny and Steve had thought he would be four. Jaden could tell that the Kazakh baby would belong to both Penny and Steve, while he mostly belonged to Penny. At least that was the way he saw it. It was weird because before he came here, he'd been thrilled to be moving to America. He'd had all sorts of fantasies about how much he would love his new country, but somehow that wasn't the case, and that made him mad. Anyway, inside every living organism were these two holes called ion channels, which allowed only certain atoms and molecules to pass through. Scientists had found electrical current associated with these channels. It was Jaden's belief that these mysterious ion channels controlled every part of life, made your heart beat, made your kidneys clean your blood, made you breathe, everything. He would like to go to France someday to see La Fée Electricité, a painting about the history of electricity. It was huge, 624 square meters. If he were a painter, he would like to extend the painting to include the present. Currently, it went up to 1937, and a lot had happened since then. He would add pictures of ion channels. His biggest and most important life goal was to learn the difference between life and death. Like in a thing called pulseless electrical activity, the body showed electrical activity even after the heart stopped beating. So, were you alive or dead? He stared up at the flimsy-looking plastic that contained the oxygen masks that would supposedly fall down if the cabin lost oxygen. He wondered how often maintenance workers checked to make sure those masks worked. He felt somebody jiggle his feet and sat up to see Steve frowning at him. What is it? Jaden asked. He didn't like it when someone distracted him when he was thinking about something important, like oxygen. This adoption is something we're doing together, so let's do it together. Huh? Jaden didn't, Jaden didn't get it. It's something they were doing together, so they should do it together? Steve stared at him, then gestured his head like, Come on. Oh. They didn't like him being alone. Jaden climbed over the seats and went back to his window. Oh, honey, it didn't feel right without you here, Penny told him. Yeah, I know what you mean, Jaden said, though he knew no such thing. Oh, I'm so worried about, well, it might be bad luck to say it, but you know. Yeah, Jaden knew. Even he felt a little worried because of their adoption agency going out of business, and they were adopting from Kaislorda, where Penny had told him few Americans had adopted. So basically, it was only a hope that made them believe that their agency's in-country personnel would pick them up in Kaislordia. Their first stop in Kazakhstan was Almaty, the biggest city in the country. Jaden took off his sunglasses as they went through customs and headed for the waiting room. After the long flight, he wanted to move his legs, but there was nowhere much to go. The waiting area for all flights was a big room with a shiny white floor and row after row of connected seats. Most of the seats were filled. Jaden immediately noticed a group of women with babies. Mom, look, they must have been adopt they must have just adopted. Let's go have a chat, Penny said excitedly. Jaden followed along. As soon as they reached the women, stuck Steve stuck out his hand to shake with one of them. I'm Steve Kincaid. Are you by some chance American? We're here to adopt and couldn't help noticing that you all have babies. One of the ladies shook his hand and said, Yes, we're all American. I'm Clara. What agency are you with? One World Adoptions. Oh, I almost signed with them. I'm with Open Heart International. She gently jostled the baby in her arms, beaming down at him. And this is Michael. I haven't heard of Open Heart, Penny said. They're a small agency, but very good, Clara motioned to her baby. The whole process took only a year. Really? Penny exclaimed. I'm jealous. We've been at it for longer. 
But for the moment, we've put all negativity out of our thinking process, Steve added quickly. That's what you have to do when you're adopting, Clara agreed. This is Nika, and her adoption took four years. She's suing her agency when she gets home. Four years, Steve and Penny said simultaneously, shifting their attention to the woman beside Clara. Jaden tuned out the talking and studied the babies. Three were Asian and two were not. He'd read up on it. Most babies adopted from Kazakhstan were Central Asian, Russian, or a mix. There were other ethnicities, but those were the main categories. Only one of the babies was asleep, one was awake and a little fussy, one was awake and staring blankly into space from his stroller, and two were crying despite their new mother's attempts to calm them. He knelt in front of the one staring blankly. Hi, he said, as if he were talking to another 12-year-old. The baby didn't even seem to notice him. Baby, hi, adopted baby. Then the baby gazed at him, but blankly. Are you a sleepy baby? It's very late. One of the women knelt beside him. Hi, I'm his mother. He isn't that demonstrative yet. He never laughs or cries. Can I touch him? Sure. Jaden poked gently at the baby's little face. It felt soft and doughy. He had never talked to or touched a baby before. Marty and Catherine had tried to get him to carry their baby, but he'd refused. Babies didn't seem quite human. Plus, what if he broke a baby somehow? He glanced at the crying babies. The sound was already starting to annoy him. He hoped that they didn't end up with a crier. The blank-faced baby's mother tried tickling him under the chin, but he didn't respond. I hope he's okay, the mother said. His medical report said he was healthy but I'm not sure he's bonded with me at all. She wrinkled her forehead and worriedly studied her new son, patting him softly on the chest. He does look healthy, Jaden said. He squeezed the baby's leg. Ah, he feels strong, maybe a wrestler someday. Can I ask you something that's none of my business? The mother asked. What, are you adopted? I mean, I know it's none of my business. Yes, I am, I am. I'm Romanian, Romanian American, I guess. He was surprised. He always thought he was incognito since he was white and so were Penny and Steve. Oh, that's wonderful. Adoption is the most beautiful thing. Jaden held her eyes briefly, then shifted his attention to the baby. The baby was staring at Jaden as if Jaden were a statue or even a painting on a wall. It was like there was a slight glimmer of awareness, but nothing more. Jaden stood up. The ladies with the crying babies already seemed stressed and they hadn't even started their journey home yet. He felt bad for them, but he also felt bad for the poor babies. The babies probably didn't know what was going on, although who can say what someone that young knows? He hated how pompous doctors sounded when they assumed they knew what was going on inside someone else's head. They didn't know, and Jaden wished he could tell every adopted kid who had to talk to a doctor that the doctor didn't know. Only you know, and you don't have to tell them. Jaden gazed around the big room. He couldn't see any other kids. He thought he could feel the air of fatigue around just about everybody. It was like the whole room was filled with it, as if it were smoke or something. The chairs didn't appear very comfortable, but he sat in one anyway and tried to nap while Penny and Steve continued trading information with the women. Steve seemed merely curious, but Penny acted ravenous for information, her body leaning slightly forward and her face hyper alert. Jaden couldn't fall all the way asleep, but he did feel pleasantly half asleep the crying fading into the background. After a while, he heard everyone say goodbye, and he stood up groggily. Nice to meet you all, Penny was saying. Good luck. Good luck, a couple of the women said back. Jaden gave a small wave and watched the women push their strollers toward the gate to their new lives. He hoped the babies would grow up happy. He wondered what would become of the blank-faced baby and felt a sudden surge of protectiveness toward him. Then a sudden urge, surge of rage towards Penny and Steve for adopting him, even though they had nothing to do with the babies. But why hadn't they just given money to his mother so that she could raise him herself? He cried out, hey, and ran after the Americans. They all stopped. He approached the woman with the blank faced baby and said, let me give you my email address. I want to know how your baby does. Oh, she said. She took out a pen and he wrote down Rom Jaden at att.net. Thank you, he told her. No problem. 
but as Jaden watched her leave, he knew that she would never email him. Penny and Steve decided to walk around the room for some exercise, but Jaden leaned back in a chair and gnawed vigorously on a straw he'd, bought to chew on, he'd brought to chew on. The woman next to him silently eyed the straw he was chewing and then said something sharply in another language. The man on the other side of him said, Excuse me. His accent was so thick it took Jaden a moment to realize he was speaking English. You are American. I might practice my English. Yes, Jaden said, taking the straw out of his mouth. New York? No, Illinois, Jaden answered, near Chicago. The man nodded uncertainly. You have seen Astana, or Capitol? No. You should go. Astana is a symbol of the national idea statement. This time it was for Jaden to nod uncertainly. The man was Central Asian with dark, earnest eyes. He paused and his eyes went out of focus for a moment, as if he were thinking. Los Angeles, the man said, near where you live? No, Chicago is the closest big city. I have not heard of this. Ah, Americans have a sporty character, do they not? Well, Jaden thought about that. They do like sports. Good, good, I'll be well, isn't it? Yes, well. The woman next to him stood up and the man smiled politely and opened out his palms. My flight, I wish you pleasantries on your trip. You too, nice to meet you. You're welcome, goodbye. Bye. The man got up and strode crisply off. Jaden chuckled to himself, then felt immediately surprised. He didn't laugh much, so it was always like he had to stop and take notice whenever he did. When Penny and Steve sat back down, an hour had passed with Jaden doing nothing but shaking his leg up and down and watching his feet as he shuffled them inside and out. Penny brushed hair out of his eyes. Honey, why don't you get some sleep? She put her arm around him and pulled in. With her as a pillow, Jaden closed his eyes, but his mind was alert. The sounds of announcements and the discomfort of the chair and the discomfort of Penny's shoulder kept him from falling asleep, and he couldn't stop thinking about the blank-faced baby. He hoped that child would be okay. He opened his eyes and stared at the reflections of tired people on the white floor. He imagined them all as babies, the whole room filled with babies.